Hello and welcome to the Victorian UAS training video on the effects of controls on a multi-rotor aircraft and an overview of some basic manoeuvres you can undertake on any multi-rotor aircraft. We will begin with an overview of the transmitter. Here is a basic transmitter which has two joysticks as well as some buttons. The joysticks can be set up in four different configurations known as mode 1, mode 2, mode 3 and mode 4. These different modes correspond to which stick does what movement for the aircraft. The most common transmitter configuration is called mode 2 and we will cover that off in this video. On a mode 2 transmitter your left thumb controls throttle up and throttle down as well as your left and your right. Your right thumb controls pitch forward and pitch backward as well as roll left and roll right. These controls can be difficult to understand from a written perspective so we will now show a video of how these movements correspond to the movement of an airframe. In this case we tap the middle button to take off. Now using our left thumb if we lean left the aircraft rotates left. If we push right the aircraft rotates right on the spot. Using the left thumb, if we push forward, we go up, throttling up. And if we pull back down, we throttle down, causing us to descend. If we use our right thumb, we can push right to make ourselves slide right. And push left to make ourselves slide left without turning. We can then pull back to move back towards us without gaining and losing altitude or push forward to move forward without gaining or losing altitude. Now that you know the basic controls, it's time to try to do some manoeuvres. In this video we are going to cover off three manoeuvres. The sliding square, the vertical square and the circuit. These three manoeuvres assist with dexterity, control and understanding the orientation of your aircraft. We will start with a description of the sliding square. In this demonstration we will also show the stick movements on the transmitter below. We start by pitching forward using the right thumb. We then pause and then we roll to the right using the right thumb. We pause, we then pitch backward using the right thumb and pause and then we roll to the left using the right thumb and pause forming a square in the air. We will now show this manoeuvre. We pitch forward and we come to a hover. We then roll to the right and we come to a hover. We then pitch backward and again come to our hover and roll to the left and come to a hover where we began forming a square. Next we will describe the vertical square and again use our transmitter with arrows to show the movements. We start by using our left thumb to throttle up and move vertically. We then come to our hover. We then use our right thumb to roll to the right and then come to a hover. We use our left thumb to throttle down and descend, come to a hover and then use our right thumb to roll to the left to come back to our original position and hover. We'll now demonstrate this using our small airframe. We start by throttling up and then we come to a hover. We roll across to our right and we come to a hover. We slowly descend and again come to our hover before rolling to the left and finishing the manoeuvre. Our final manoeuvre is the circuit. The circuit is the most difficult manoeuvre as we'll be changing the orientation of the aircraft to no longer be in line with ourselves. As with the sliding square, we're going to start with our right thumb pitching forward. However, before we come to the corner, we're going to start inputting some yaw with our left thumb. In this case, we're going to yaw right. So as we continue to pitch forward, we will yaw right and do a 90 degree turn. We are now facing 90 degrees from ourselves. So if we continue to pitch forward with our right thumb, we'll actually move from left to right. 
So as we continue to pitch forward, as we come to the corner, we again add some yaw in to turn 90 degrees and we'll be facing ourselves. If we then continue to pitch forward, we'll come towards ourselves. If we continue to come towards ourselves and then use our left thumb once more to pitch right, we'll actually turn to head from right to left. We can then continue forward from right to left till we get to our original starting position and then yaw with our left thumb one more time to stop and hover where we began. So I'll now demonstrate how it looks when it's conducted with an aircraft. We start with our hover, then using our right thumb we pitch forward. Using our left thumb we then turn 90 degrees to the right and continue moving forward. As we come to our next corner we turn right 90 degrees again. As we come forward we turn right 90 degrees once more, head across, and get to our final turn where we turn 90 degrees and we hover. While that manoeuvre may have seemed fairly simple in the video, please be aware that it can take a lot of practice, especially if you have an aircraft that does not hold its spatial position. This means that as you move you will get drift, meaning that while you intend to move forward you may also get some roll to the left or right which you need to compensate. This can be extremely difficult with the small airframes, but being able to do these manoeuvres will mean that you have no problem flying larger aircraft. This has been a Victorian UAS training video on the effects of controls for a multirotor aircraft and some basic flight manoeuvres. To find out more, please visit vuas.com.au.